Hello everyone, today we're going to do a quick experiment to figure out the first law of thermodynamics, which means that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it simply changes from one form to the next. And tie in the second law of thermodynamics, which says that uh, as you transfer one energy to type to another type, it's going to dissipate energy along the way. So here I have a container, basically a tube, filled with sand, about half filled with sand, and in it is a thermometer. Right now the thermometer is read, you can't read it very well, but it says 20 one degree Celsius. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip this over so the sand can fall and tip it back and tip it over and tip it back. I'm going to do that several times. Now when you think about it, this is actually going to be conservation of energy because what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, potential energy because that sand up here, it wants to fall, so when I tip it upside down, the sand is up here, it wants to fall a certain height, it wants to fall a certain height, so there's a certain one saying that says MGH, and when it falls, all of that energy is going to get transferred into heat. Not all of it, but some of it. So conservation energy says, hey, here's my st starting energy, here's my ending energy, it's going to equal heat. Now, the equation for heat, because this is, it's not changing phase, it's not going to melt the sand, it's just going to change the temperature of the sand. There's a thermometer in there which can actually measure the change in temperature. So the equation for heat is, uh, well this stays the same, equals mc delta t. So really it doesn't matter how much sand you have in there because there's mass on both sides. The mass of the sand cancels out. So g times h equals c times delta t. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to figure out what is the specific heat of sand based on the temperature sand based on the temperature change. So, if I do that once, and I read the temperature, it doesn't really change much. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it a thousand times! Let's go! <laughs> Alright, I'm getting tired. I didn't do it a thousand times, I did it 200 times and I got tired. But you can see the temperature raised from 21 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius. It is really blurry, it's hard to see that. Now it's dropping 25. Uh, so it went from 21 to 26, so it changed 5 degrees Celsius with 200 turns. Okay, well, another piece of information that I need is the height that the sand traveled each time. So basically, I'm just going to multiply this potential energy 200 times <laughs> and that's my because it was MGH and I need to multiply that height 200 times because it essentially changed its height 200 times uh, the height of that I measured beforehand was 10 centimeters so essentially you have 10 centimeters which is 0.1 meters okay so working through the math here what do we got well, we know that 200 times 0.1 is 20. So really, the sand traveled 20 meters. It didn't travel straight down 20 meters, but it traveled back and forth a bunch of times 20 meters. So we have 9.81 for G times 20 equals specific heat capacity of sand times 5, because the temperature change, sorry, times 4. Yeah, no, 5. It went from 21 to 26. Forgot. I jumped down to 25 after I let it cool down. All right, very good. So now we can find the specific heat capacity of sand. Just rearrange that for C. So I get a value for specific heat capacity of sand to be 39.24. Uh, so C is 39.24. Let's take a what the units for specific heat capacity would be. This is, uh, this whole side is joules. And we're dividing by mass, so joules per kelvin, or kilogram, and we're also dividing by temperature, kelvin. So the specific heat capacity is going to be joules per kilogram kelvin. 39.24 is the specific heat capacity that I got for the sand. Now, now the actual specific heat capacity of sand is 790 joules per kilogram kelvin. That's pretty far off. So the actual is 790. 
we got 39. They're not equal. So let's try to think about why they're not equal. Well, there's something that we really have to consider here, is that one thing is when I turn it, is that I put more than just potential energy into it, I put kinetic energy into it as well. So really, this should be MGH plus one half MV squared. And then also, the main reason, is the second law of thermodynamics. Stays, hey, yeah, I put heat into the sand, but there's a lot of dissipated energy. So really, there is my full uh, equation. I don't know how fast I turned it. I tried to go, well, you saw I was going kind of fast. And now sped up, by the way. I was going kind of fast, but in reality, we can't always simplify things by just saying MGH equals Q, but sometimes we can. Sometimes we can if uh, if it's a good efficiency. This would be a pretty bad efficiency. Our efficiency would be, well, whatever 39 divided by 790 is. Yeah, that's pretty far off. So hopefully that makes sense. We're going to try this experiment on your own, see how close you can get. Can you get better than 5% efficiency? Hopefully.